Today's custom budget PC is yet again fitted into another unassuming PC case. And no, there is not a Pentium CPU inside. Let's take a look inside this little PC. I actually did enjoy building into this case, but as you can see, there doesn't really leave much for cable management. The most I could do is bundle up the cables to make sure they're not going to encumber any of the case fans. Underneath our trusty Thermored Assassin Spirit V2 CPU cooler, there's an Intel Core i5-10400 CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. Right beside that, there's 16 gigabytes of Timetech DDR4 3200MHz RAM. No fancy heat sinks here. And that's mainly because this MSI Pro H510M-B motherboard doesn't really support XMP with the CPU, so we're stuck at 2666MHz, but that isn't the end of the world. And here we have a Gainward GeForce GTX 1660 Super graphics card with 6GB of GDDR6 memory. Here's what the card looks like outside of the case. Windows 11 Pro is installed onto a Timetech MS09 512GB NVMe solid state drive running at PCIe 3x4 speeds. To accompany that, beyond the bundle of cables, there's an 80GB hard drive I threw in just for free for some extra storage space. Better than nothing. And powering the system is an older but very capable 500 watt Delta power supply. One thing I was really pleasantly surprised with was the temperature during gaming and benchmark tests. I was able to fit this 120 millimeter air intake fan that's feeding air directly to the GPU. And there's a little 80 millimeter exhaust fan over here. I suppose the power supply also acts as an exhaust. Moving on to the front IO of the PC case, we have a CD slash DVD RW optical drive. 2 times USB 2.0 microphone and headphone jacks. Onto the rear I.O. the motherboard, we have an HDMI and VGA port for some extra displays. Mouse and keyboard PS2 port, 4 times USB 2.0, 2 times USB 3.2 Gen 1, Gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port, some audio jacks. And on the graphics card, we have 1 times DVI, 1 times HDMI 2.0, and 1 times Display Port 1.4a. And despite this cable mess, which I can get over if we just put on the case panel. Speaking of the side panel of the case, I actually really like this little vent here. It's kind of like a porthole in a ship. And there's some grills for some passive air intake for the GPU. So let's take a look at some of the video encoding and video render tests. And here we have DaVinci Resolve 19 loaded up with my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p testing footage. With the following render settings. Let's see how long this one takes. 3 minutes and 58 seconds. I really have to say the GTX 1660 Super is really surprising me with its good performance and really good thermals. And it also beat out the combination of the i5-10400 with the GTX 1080 Ti by 6 seconds. And it's only 10 seconds longer than the i5-12400F and the RTX 3060 Ti. Definitely a win for an older GPU. And now it's time to test out Handbrake with my usual 11 minutes of gaming footage at the Creator 1080p's preset. And we're just testing out raw CPU power. Let's go. 4 minutes and 20 seconds. So the last time we were testing with an i5-10400, this, this is actually 8 seconds faster. Let's see what kind of results we get with just the GPU. 1 minute and 2 seconds. So that's pretty interesting. We're actually 5 seconds faster than the last time with the 10400 and the GTX 1080 Ti that has 11 gigabytes of GGDR5X memory, while the 1660 Super has 6 gigabytes of GGDR6. Maybe that difference matters, at least a little bit. So that's some pretty interesting results. And honestly, I think another win for the 1660 Super in this case. If you're using a GTX 1660 Super and an i5-10400 in 2025, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching my video, and I hope you have a great day. So let's check out the gaming performance.